everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today we're making a delicious Korean fried chicken. So if you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Now here are our list of ingredients that we need. And if you guys don't want to make the spicy marinade, it is not necessary, but it's just really good, I think. So let's get started. Obviously I am making the spicy marinade because I like spicy food and you guys know that if you've been following me. But we're just going to go ahead and add all of our ingredients in here together. The ingredients that we are adding does not need to be in there in any specific order except for the corn syrup that we're going to add last. And yes, I did write apple juice. Yes, you do want apple juice, not water. And if you guys don't already have ground onion, go ahead and ground it up and then throw in a few tablespoons of this. Two to three is fine. I went ahead and just used two for me. We're going to go ahead and mix everything up to make sure everything is nicely dissolved and bring it to a boil. It's only going to take you like a minute or so depending on how hot your stove top gets. The last thing you want to add is our corn or rice syrup, the Korean kind, okay? So just add that last and then we're going to continue bringing it to a boil and then add our green onion. If you want it to be spicier, add red and green peppers instead. If you want to keep it on the milder side of the spicy, just add green onions like I am. Now for our super simple batter. I'm using a half a cup of all-purpose flour. Use your gluten-free substitute as needed. And your half a cup of rice flour. Then we're going to start off with one cup of cold water. You want really cold water with this and start mixing this up. And once you get most of it mixed up, you're going to see how thick the batter is. Go ahead and grab a whisk, or you can whisk from the beginning, but couldn't find it at the moment, so we went ahead and used a fork. But here you are with our whisk, and then add another quarter cup of water and continue mixing. You'll see how thin it gets and we want kind of a thinner batter with this because we want the light, crunchy, crispy texture with our chicken. I am using chicken breast. I'm gonna be cutting it into chicken strips. Now here's the thing. If you guys want to make bone-in chicken, go ahead and do so. About five pounds worth is probably what you're gonna need. Three to five pounds. I'm using about three pounds of the chicken breast right here. Cut these into strips. Cut these into chunks or little nugget size, bite-sized pieces. Depending on the size of your chicken, you will be cooking it longer. And yes, my chicken is a little bit frozen just so it doesn't just move around so much whenever I cut into it, but that's what I'm doing. And if you did not know, you don't have to have these defrosted in order for it to cook through thoroughly. I mean, I don't know about you guys, I worked in a fast food restaurant as a kid and we could throw frozen chicken strips right into the fryer and it cooks through perfectly every single time. So you don't need to worry about it being defrosted again, otherwise you're going to have to measure out the different timing of it all. By the way, use a larger pan than what I did. This isn't all the chicken that I'm using. I just pulled a couple of them out and then I started using more. The pan was not large enough for me. You're going to want to get a large bowl so that you can go ahead and marinate everything right into it. I just created another dish that wasn't necessary. That's it. While you're cutting up your chicken and you see a piece of fat, cut it off. We don't want that. No one's going to eat that. It's going to taste all weird and gamey, so we don't want any of that. And again, continue cutting just like you normally would. Now before I start marinating, I wanted to go ahead and add my vegetable oil right into the pan. We are using a saucepan because if you use a larger pan or a wok or frying pan or whatever, you're going to end up using more oil and it's going to be harder to deep fry if you don't have a deep fryer like me. I went ahead and just put mine on a medium high heat and let that sit while I got to my marinade here. You're not going to need any salt in this because of the soy sauce that you're going to be using. So go ahead and add your pepper to taste. I think I used about an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon of it. And then I am again using tamari. You guys use your soy sauce, whatever it is that you'd like or prefer. And then add your sesame oil right into the mix too. Use some clean hands or grab your plastic gloves and let's go ahead and mix all of this through. Go ahead and break apart any chickens that could be stuck and frozen together again. As you can see, there's going to be a lot of sauce on the bottom. The longer the chicken sits on the bottom, the more marinade, obviously, you're going to taste inside of your chicken, which is fine and actually tastes really great with the spicy marinade, I think. But if you don't want it to have a heavy marinade taste to it, I would go ahead and just remove the rest of the sauce that's in there. But we're going to let it sit there for 10 minutes, just like this. Now that our oil is ready, we're going to do our test fry first. We're going to do this for four minutes for our first test fry. We're going to go ahead and take that out and put it on a lined cookie sheet, baking sheet, whatever else, just to soak up some of that grease and throw it again into our pan or our saucepan for a second test fry. We're going to double fry all of these. 
and look how beautiful that turns out. It's a golden crispy chicken strip right there. Our test fry came out absolutely delicious, so we went ahead and put the rest of our chicken right into the batter. The amount of batter that we have is perfect for the amount of chicken that you're going to end up having. So three pounds of chicken breast to our one cup to one and a quarter cup of water batter is perfect. So here's our first fry of the first batch. I believe there's like five chicken strips in there if you count it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And then we're going to double fry it again and you're going to see how beautiful they look. We did not add more batter to it. We just went ahead and put it straight back into the fryer after we let it cool for one minute in between. Once that's done, go ahead and throw it right back into our saucepan with the spicy marinade and we're going to coat it evenly all the way through. You're going to want to serve this right away because otherwise it's going to get kind of soggy and we don't want that. So if you look, this is how it turns out. Sprinkle it with some green onions and some sesame on top. Serve it with some rice, grab a beer, it's perfect. Otherwise, if you want it plain, we can keep it just like this. The marinade really gave this a great flavor. You guys really don't need anything more with this. Perfect for the kids, anybody that doesn't like spicy, if you don't want to make the spicy marinade like I said before. If you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it and share it, and until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.